Tuesday, November 23rd, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to look at the fallacy that uh, wages are inflationary, rising wages are inflationary. And again, I'm going to touch upon inflation uh, because there's a lot of misconceptions out there in the 70s they blamed the unions for inflation and now in the uk we're going to get more strikes in the run-up to christmas and after new year the rmt strike the rail maritime transport uh union they're gonna strike for higher wages are they causing inflation well hopefully i'll uh convince you that they're not <laughs> and am i a socialist no and, and i think uh, unions uh, should forget about socialism they they should focus more on sound money that's what we're going to look at today briefly before i start just wanted to point out that there's some interesting headlines out there one is that 80,000 crypto traders from the uk are out of pocket and they lost all their money. What's the lesson here? Well, you need to be aware that even with your broker, you have counterparty risk. Uh, your broker as well, don't forget, be it a crypto or a stock broker, they have a bank account with a bank. So if you leave a lot of cash with your broker as well, there's two counterparties there. There's the, the broker, and the bank and am i saying people shouldn't have any of their savings or capital with brokers no i'm just saying you need to be aware of it and make sure that uh, you balance your risks because i, I personally have some money uh, with a stock broker of course uh, the other one is about the uh, energy situation for europe and it's from the uh, ft this morning a uh, Vital chief warns of absolutely awful summer to come in Europe with gas prices remaining high. So this is the biggest uh, independent energy trader in the world. This company Vital and uh, the CEO, uh, Russell Hardy, is saying that uh, it's going to be tough still because there's still gaps in the energy sector because of the Russian situation. And... Uh, Yes, I know many of you are going to say, well, inflation's higher because of the war in the Ukraine and COVID. Uh, but I'm going to try to prove you wrong anyway. Before I go further, I just wanted to say that if you enjoy my videos, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you regularly uh, watch my videos. And also hit the little notification bell. So let's quickly go through inflation, and we've done that many times. Of course, many of you are new to the channel, and you might not have seen this. Uh, this is my gold standard, so to speak, my benchmark for what inflation really is. And, and it's a quote from Felix Sommery, uh, the most probably, arguably the most respected banker in the first half of the 20th century. And this is what he said. In his memoirs, The Raven of Zurich, another book I recommend, you can find a free PDF of which I'll put below in the description. And he says, the state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. So you see, the situation, geopolitical situation is all being manufactured uh, by the politicians, by our governments. Um, I'm not going to go over the arguments about the Ukraine, but suffice it to say, I would say that uh, Russia had a valid case. <laughs> Back in 1991-92, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the Americans promised the Russians, James Baker, Secretary of State, promised the Russians that NATO would not expand eastward, wouldn't even go into East Germany. And here we are, 30 years later, and uh, NATO is knocking on the door of uh, Russia, 
trying to uh, get Ukraine there. So that's what I'm trying to say here. It could have been avoided. So government has been um, the culprit here because if things were still running smoothly, the energy market with Russia and Europe, this wouldn't be happening. And some of you might say, well, we shouldn't be dependent on Russia for our gas. Well, <laughs> then maybe we shouldn't be dependent on, on the Middle East for our oil either. So it's not a good argument. And uh, back in the 70s, it's the same thing. And I highly recommend this book, The Energy Non-Crisis. It's about the energy crisis in the 70s by Lindsay Williams. We all think that it was the Arab sheikhs who caused uh, the, uh, the rising prices because they embargoed. They didn't want to sell to the, uh, to the West because of the, uh, I think it was the Yom Kippur War. It was in 1973. But if you read this book, you will see that uh, Western governments were also involved in fomenting the crisis. Uh, Lindsay Williams. So yes, governments are always involved. And um, if you look back at the 60s, they started inflating the money and credit in the 60s already. And the same thing now, they started inflating the money and credit basically even before the OA crisis. And, and what we're seeing now gives them an excuse to say, well, this is what's causing the inflation. And another book I'm going to recommend is this one. So you can understand what inflation and money really are. So it's What Has Government Done to Our Money by Murray Rothbard. I'll put a free PDF uh, below and link as well to the bookstore at the Mises Institute if you'd like to buy this book. But he very succinctly explains that money is just uh, the most marketable commodity and that prior to money, people used to barter. And when you barter, you um, actually barter value for value but when the government comes in and takes over the monetary system or the bankers do like mr rothschild said back in the 1800s give me control of a of a nation's money and i care not who makes the laws right they can they can inflate and deflate at will when they control the money uh so that's why You always see these kinds of, uh, how can I say, misconceptions build up there. And, and I think it's done to detract the attention from the public, from the real cul culprits, the real people that create the inflation. It's the bankers, the central bankers and the governments by overspending. It's, it's, all, it's akin to someone coming to your neighborhood uh, with and they uh, print fake uh, dollar bills or whatever, very good, and they start buying everything, prices are going to go up. Uh, and it's the same thing governments do. They're not really trading fairly, value for value. So, and one of the reasons I'm talking about this is that because uh, I think we're going to see a lot of people starting to blame uh, the unions because they're starting to go on strikes because they want higher wages. But I would say the higher wages that they want uh, is just a symptom of the inflation because the currency is getting diluted and debased even more and they can't, they're working hard uh, and uh, their wages don't cover their uh, living costs. <laughs> and, and you can understand that. And I would say that Hopefully, these unions will realize that socialism and the current system that we're in is not the solution. And, and that's why I've designed this mug, AUAG Wage Only. It's in my Teespring store. So AU for gold, AG for silver. Uh, I think that's the way forward for uh, uh, trade unions. They should uh, demand sound money. Uh, they wouldn't have this problem. And they should maybe not fall for this uh, rich versus poor thing, even though I know that right now 
<laughs> the, the very wealthy are doing very well. <laughs> and it's uh, ironic because if you look at the aggregated CEO to work compensation ratio for the 350 largest publicly owned companies in the US from 1965 to, 19, to 2021, you can see that in 1965, CEOs earned 20 times more than the uh, average worker. And now it's the highest it's been. It's almost 400 times. So what about CEO inflation? Why, uh, why isn't CEO pay inflationary, right? So that just proves my point, I would say. And uh, hopefully, hopefully people will wake up. And that's why I ask you to share this video as far as you can. So people can wake up, not just here in the UK, but everywhere around the world. Uh, so when people say wage inflation, um, it, it's re it really annoys me because inflation, wages don't cause inflation, food doesn't cause inflation, energy doesn't cause inflation. Uh, what causes inflation uh, is the uh, creation of currency and credit out of thin air by governments and their uh, agent central banks. They all work together. Well, as Mr. Rothschild said, uh, you give me control of the money through a central bank and fiat currency. The government and the banks are one and the same. So those are the culprits. So let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning then. It's uh, 8.30 a.m. London time. Of course, tomorrow is going to be Thanksgiving in the U.S. and happy th Thanksgiving to my uh, U.S. viewers. And Friday, the market is open again in the U.S., but it's going to be fairly quiet and I expect it to be quiet today as well. Uh, I uh, saw my wife was watching, I think, Redacted, and I think uh, apparently one third of Americans are not going to have a turkey dinner because it's getting too expensive. I saw that turkeys are also getting very expensive here. Uh, of course, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but people are already saying that they're not going to buy one for Christmas. So uh, that's the way it goes. Um, and you can blame the government for that <laughs> because they're the only uh, really people to blame for inflation. So we've got spot gold at uh, 1742. It's up just over a dollar. Uh, precious metals market had a good run up in the last couple of weeks or so. And right now it's kind of uh, get <laughs> consolidating, I would say. Um, the high has been 46 and the low uh, 1733. Spot silver is up 10 cents, 21.20. High has been 33 and the low has been 20.89. It still feels like um, the spot price has been kept under the water, like a, someone keeping a basketball under the water. And uh, one day it will just pop out and <laughs> go to the moon. I don't know when that is. And I know it's been a, a hard, long wait. But uh, patience, I would say, if you believe in the uh, sound money, in the sound money camp, of course. Some of you uh, think that gold and silver are just there to be traded for depreciating fiat currencies, and that's your prerogative. To the stock market, it's very quiet. Dow is basically unchanged, the NASDAQ and the S&P, so very quiet stock markets. Uh, currencies, uh, sterling is down slightly, 118.70. The euro is up a quarter of a percent, 103.30. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the yen. Uh, and the dollar is up a third versus the Swiss franc. Uh, the dollar is uh, up slightly, uh, actually unchanged versus the ruble. It's trading right around 60 uh, spot 50. To the other currencies here, uh, Aussie dollar is unchanged, 66.51. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, dollar uh, Canadian, uh, dollar versus Canadian unchanged. Kiwi dollar, though, is up half a percent at 61.80. To the general commodities, WTI crude is up three quarters of a percent, 81.50. Uh, Brent is up half a percent. Sorry. Brent is up three quarters as well, 88.50. High grade copper is up half a percent at 363. U.S. Nat Gas is up uh, 6.8 percent at 7.79. Let's check the uh, Dutch TTF Nat Gas futures. Uh, that's up 10 percent. It's at 131. Recently, it traded below uh, 100. And if you look at this chart here, prior to uh, COVID, really in 2020 or 2021, uh, this natural gas uh, future traded around 15, yeah, 15, not 130, so it's still uh, highly elevated. We'll finish off with the bond market. Look at the 10-year yield. 10-year yield is up uh, one and a half basis points at 377. The two-year, though, has gone up quite a bit. It's up another two and a half basis points at 454. So the curve is heavily inverted here, 454 to 377. Even the one month treasury bill is, is at 388, which is above the 30 year. So this is a, a real uh, warning about the economy. And uh, don't be fooled by the uh, headlines from Wall Street and the mainstream media about things being uh, good <laughs> economically. I, I think a lot of people are suffering. And, and uh, before I finish, just wanted to say that uh, we were warned yesterday by the uh, national grid that we might have uh, blackouts. <laughs> uh, we could have had blackouts last night. Uh, and then they uh, came out and said, oh, no, we're not. There's no problem. But just the fact that they came out and warned <laughs> is probably uh, a warning that it will happen soon. So there you go. Um, with that, I'm going to wish you all a, a great day. And to my viewers in the U.S., I'm going to wish you a great Thanksgiving weekend with your family. And hopefully you enjoy a nice piece of turkey. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, take care. Bye.